Today we're going to be talking about what HDSLR is right for you. We're going to go over the differences in each one and help you decide which one you want to purchase. Class is in session. Welcome to HDSLR 101. This episode is made possible by CPM Film Tools, your lightweight solution for caging the beast. LCD Viewfinder, the essential accessory for DSLR video. Lightcraft Workshop, the perfect tools to create the perfect image. Manhattan LCD, the affordable solution for high definition monitoring. Hi, my name is Tony Reale from NextWaveDV.com and welcome to HDSLR 101. We're going to be talking about the differences in these different HDSLRs um, and the different ones that you can choose one. Now the ones I have behind me are all Canon and we're going to be, mainly through this entire series, we're going to be talking about Canon. Now this stuff can apply to the Panasonics and to the Nikons and, and other, some, probably the Sonys too. Um, the settings are a little different and the reason that we've chosen Canons is something that we're going to talk about a little later on too. Um, but first of all, when picking an HDSLR, you want to kind of choose uh, first of all, what, what uh, sensor size that you want. The sensor size affects your shallowness of depth of field, your light sensitivity, and also your crop factor to your lenses. Uh, using a full frame sensor lens in a 5D, for example, if you use a 22 to 70 or 22 to 105 zoom lens, you're going to have a normal 22 millimeter to 70 because it's a full frame and full coverage. If you use that in a 7D or a T2i, these are crop frame sensors and they have uh, a 1.6 crop to them. So you multiply your millimeters of your lens by 1.6. So you have a 50 millimeter lens that will become an 80 millimeter lens. If you're looking at the Panasonic GH1 or the upcoming GH2, you'll be looking at a crop of uh, 2.0 because that's using a micro four thirds. Uh, if you're using a micro four thirds lens, then the crop doesn't necessarily apply. But if you're using a uh, Zeiss or a Canon or a different type of lens, on that camera, uh, the, the GH1, the micro for this camera, you're going to end up with a two times crop. So a 50 millimeter lens becomes a 100 millimeter. And it's really hard to get wide angles on a crop. So for example, a 22 millimeter, 22 to, to 105 F4 uh, Canon lens, a real nice L series lens, on a 5D, 22 millimeters is pretty wide and that's very usable. But if you put that on a 7D or a T2i, you're going to get a 1.6 crop factor and you're no longer going to have 22 millimeters, you're going to have something in the 30s. And the problem with that is that you're not necessarily able to get as wide an angle as you want. So now you have to get another lens, like a 16 to 35, just to be able to get a wide enough angle to something that you were able to get standard on your 5D with the full frame. So your lenses are a big determining factor when choosing um, which HDSLR that you want to work with. Speaking of lenses, uh, Canon bodies are able to use adapters that allow you to use Nikon lenses on the Canons. Uh, Panasonic GH1, I'm aware of that you can use the Canons on there. I believe you can also use Nikons. This is something you can check out yourself. Now, Nikon, you are not able to use Canon on a Nikon directly because of the way that the uh, attachment is limited by the space between the lens and the sensor. So choosing a camera, if you wanted uh, to be able to use Nikon glass and Canon glass, you probably would want to look at a Canon. If, you, if that's not an issue for you, then you, know, you can just look at the specific lens manufacturer of your camera. But that is a determining factor of what kind of glass that you want to use on your camera. Now, another determining factor is the frame rates of your camera. Uh, you may want to shoot 1080p, which is normal, that's your highest resolution. Uh, the 5D Mark II is able to shoot 1080p 30 frames per second uh, and also 24 frames per second and then standard def. While the 70 can shoot 1080p 30, 1080p 24, but then it also can shoot 720p at 60 frames per second. This is very useful when you want to do slow motion. If you shoot something at 60 frames per second, and then conform it down to 30 or 24 frames, you can create a really nice uh, slow motion effect. So this is something that you can't do on the 5D right now um, because of the fact that it doesn't shoot at 720p, 60 frames per second. Now Nikon, uh, most of the Nikon cameras out there only shoot at 24 frames per second which is fine if you're shooting for the web or something cinematic, but if you're trying to shoot something for broadcast, uh, 
24 frames per second is not acceptable. You have to use 29.97, which is the 30 frames per second that the uh, Canons shoot at. So that can be an issue for you too. Now, Panasonic's also shoot at uh, additional frame rates. And um, the new GH2, I believe, I just heard that it can shoot at 1080i, uh, 60i frames per second. So look at, basically look at, at the cameras and be aware of the frame rates when you're choosing. See what you want. For me, I use the 5D and uh, the slow motion is not as something that I really need. Whereas there's some people that shoot a lot of action stuff where they do want to have that slow motion as an option. So check with your frame rate, see what's the best for you. Now, if we go through the basic camera differences, we'll start with the 5D. The 5D is your full frame sensor. It's got the largest sensor and it is a higher price point starting with the body at around $2,600. Uh, with a kit lens, you're going to be looking at around $3,500. Um, so that, you got to see if that's, if that's a price point that you're interested in. Uh, the advantages with the 5D is you're going to have the full frame sensor, you're going to have um, the, the different frame rates of 1080p, 24, and 30 frames per second, um, and you're going to have that uh, really shallow depth of field advantages and the lower light sensitivity that you get from having the full frame sensor. If we move down to this Canon 7D, um, you're going to have additional frame rates, you're going to have the ability to shoot at um, 720, 60 frames per second. Um, and then you're also going to have another advantage, which is uh, with the 5D, they weren't able to have HD output while recording from your HDMI. Uh, this is very important if you're monitoring. Um, you, you won't have as high a resolution. It'll, it drops down to standard depth, which is with this, versus with the, the 70, you're able to continue uh, having an HD output while recording. So this basically helps with focusing. Now, you may be using a, a loop on eyepiece that we're going to again talk about later, um, but that so you may it may not be an issue. But if you're using monitoring and you really want to have that high definition output, you're going to have that advantage with the 7D. Uh, now the 7D uh, with a body is around $1,500, so you just dropped about $1,000 to get just the 7D with a lens. Again, depending on which kit lens that you get, it can be a $2,000 to $2,500 for that. Uh, now we move to the Canon T2i. You're going to have uh, a lower price point, it starts at around $899 with a kit lens. Uh, so you have the lowest price point. Uh, you can easily get this camera for under $1,000. Um, I believe the T2i also only has a standard def output when uh, recording through HDMI. When you hit the record button, your monitor output is only standard def. Um, the other issue with the T2i is you don't have as much ISO range, um, and we'll talk about ISO in later episodes too, but you kind of have less increments um, to be able to fine tune your ISO in the camera. Uh, so again, you're, you're limited by uh, the functionality, there's less buttons on the camera, there's less options for, for you doing your white balance with the T2i, but the price point is a lot lower. Um, so you kind of decide what your price point is. You know, a great option is just simply say, I can afford this, and then you can easily find a, a DSLR that will fit probably within that budget. Now, if you move over to Nikon, Nikons, again, um, typically were limited to 720p, 24 frames per second. They really didn't have that many options when looking at recording uh, video. Now, the new Nikons, the D3100 and the D7000, from what I've heard, have uh, the ability to shoot at 1080, but again, they're only limited to 24 frames per second. Um, they also have uh, a form of autofocus, but again, if that's contrast-based, it may be slow and may not be something that you can use uh, commonly during a shoot. Um, the other issue with, with the D90, at least I, I've worked with the D90 directly, and the D90 had some of the worst rolling shutter of, HDS, of any HDSLR. And so this can be a determining factor if you're doing a lot of movement. Uh, the D90 worked great on tripods, on sliders, on dollies, but handheld, it really suffered from rolling shutter. Uh, I'm not aware if the newer Nikons suffer from this, but again, that's something you should research. Now the Panasonic series, you have the GH1 and the upcoming GH2 to look at. They have the advantages of being able to do, to do autofocus, uh, having articulating screens. And then again, if we want to talk about the Canons and the Nikons, there are some Canons that have articulating screens and then some Canons that don't. So those are, if that's an important factor for you, if you're trying to shoot handheld or whatever, an articulating screen can be an advantage. The GH1 comes with that. Um, the GH2 is also having additional frame rates that are not available in other HDSLRs, such as 1080 60i. Um, and having the autofocus points, touchscreen autofocus, stuff like that. 
So Panasonics do have their advantages, um, but because of the Micro Four Thirds, you're going to be looking at the least shallow depth of field because it has the smallest sensor of the HD SLRs. The 5D being the largest with a full frame sensor having the shallowest. So for example, if you're shooting at an f5.6 on a uh, Panasonic GH1, it's going to be a, you're going to have a much wider depth of field than if you're shooting at f5.6 on a Canon 5D Mark II. All right, now I use the Canon 5D Mark II. The reason that I picked it is simply because I like the skin tone rendition. I liked having the full frame sh sensor with the shallow depth of field. Uh, I liked having the low light sensitivity of it. Uh, the 5D Mark II, I just simply like the look that it produces. Um, I don't have the options that the 7D has, and I also paid the higher price tag for it, but I do like it. Now, on the other side, too, is I do photography uh, as a secondary thing. Um, so I like the way that the photos looked on my 5D Mark II. Um, so that can be a determining factor. If you want to shoot photography also, or if you are a photographer, you may want to be looking at what is the best photography camera for you, and then what video functions also can accompany that. Hi, my name is uh, Aaron Randerson, and I'm just here to talk to you a little bit about why I chose the 7D. I do work in uh, TV and post-production uh, full-time, so I spend a lot of time editing and directing and things like that. And, doing a lot of uh, high-end full crew shoots. But for me, I chose the 7D because uh, I don't do a lot of shooting um, for work. I do a lot of personal shooting and a lot of personal projects and stuff like that. So I like the 7D particularly because of the price point. Um, when I looked at the 5D, I really like it, but uh, it was significantly more expensive. I was able to go on eBay actually and find a 7D with two separate kit lenses for about uh, 1800 bucks which is pretty tough to beat. Um, I'm also a big fan of the uh, frame rates with it. Um, I like shooting at 60 frames, especially if you've got um, kids or a wife or a wedding or anything like that, and you want to shoot that beautiful, buttery, smooth, slow motion shot of them you know, playing in the yard or whatever. When you get that in the post, uh, there's nothing quite like uh, 60 frame per second slowed down on that camera, I gotta say. So um, yeah, that's pretty much uh, why I chose the 7D in a nutshell. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jared Hoyman. I'm helping out today with Tony. Um, the reason I chose the T2i is I'm looking for a secondary camera. I'm not looking expensive. Uh, it was only $899 with the kit lens and then just $100 more for a 50 millimeter. Uh, I'm using the XHA1. I do a lot of comedy. So I'm not really looking for shallow depth of field, but sometimes it's necessary. And that was a great affordable price for me. Well, we hope that helps you make a great educated decision when choosing the right HDSLR for you. Please check out our other episodes of HDSLR 101 on our website, nextwavedv.com. You can also check out our other series, which can help you with technique and gear and all other great things. We have Next Wave TV, our CineTip series, and several other episodes out there. Um, HDSLR 101 will continue to be released every other week, but if you don't want to wait that long to see the next episode, you can just jump onto our website at nextwavedv.com, click on the product section, and you can download the entire HDSLR 101 series for only $20. We appreciate uh, your willingness to help support our site, and you can check out some of our other great products, such as our Next Wave Tracks, royalty-free music. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.